Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I am making some pancakes. Actually, I'm not really showing you how to make these pancakes already. So this is this is my basic pancake batter recipe. Um, what I wanted to show you today though was what baking soda and baking powder specifically do in pancake batter. Um, why we add them, why we need to sometimes add both of them. Um, so this week, today, uh, we are releasing the pancake episode of me and Deb Perlman's podcast, The Recipe. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts. Um, it's set for YouTube, apparently, um, but at some point you'll be able to get it on YouTube. But in that episode, we talk a lot about baking soda and baking powder. So I thought I'd just quickly show you what goes on. So first I'm gonna start just by making a basic pancake, right? This is just a little bit of clarified butter. And what I'm going to do is I have the pan on this burner that can hold it to the exact same temperature for every pancake. And so we'll, we'll time this first one uh, and then we will make sure that every pancake is made the exact same way after that, all right? So one ladle of pancake batter right into the center of the pan. The pan is at 300 degrees. These are going to be relatively small pancakes, but they're just sort of demonstration pancakes. All right, so we're going to let this cook until the first, start, first side starts bubbling. At 1 minute 30 seconds exactly, I'm going to flip it over, all right? 27, 28, 29, 130, okay. Okay, so a reasonable level of browning there. Maybe a little blonder than I want, but this is good because actually the next few should come out a little darker. Four, three, two, one, and I'm gonna pop this out. All right, so this is our first pancake made just the way the recipe says. All right, so the second pancake, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some batter. Maybe I'll take a double batch of batter just in case. And I'm going to add a touch of baking soda to it. So let me add like another, let's say, just for the sake of exaggeration, let's add about an extra, I don't know, that's about three-eighths of a teaspoon of baking soda that I'm adding to it. And I'm going to mix that in. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of drastically raising the pH of it. That is, I'm making it more alkaline, okay? And we're going to cook that the exact same way. A little bit of clarified butter. One scoop of batter. We'll let that first side go for a minute and 30 seconds. So baking soda, what we're doing here, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. We've added it to the pancake batter. It's lowered the pH of it. That is going to change the way that the baking soda and the acid in there react with each other. Um, so the amount of leavening will change a little bit, but really what we're doing is we're going to change the way this browns. And you'll see when I flip this over, at least I hope you'll see when I flip this over. Um, things that are more, uh, that are higher in pH tend to brown better. Um, so for example, if you're making caramelized onions uh, and you sprinkle them with a little bit of baking soda, um, what happens is the onion will brown significantly faster. They will also happen to get a lot mushier just because um, alkaline environments also lead to the breakdown of, uh, um, I have a chicken wing recipe where you toss chicken wings with salt, uh, a mixture of salt and baking powder. What that does is it helps the chicken wings brown um, a little bit faster than they would if they were just naked. Um, but let's see what happens when we flip this pancake over. So remember this first pancake is this color. We got about five seconds left on this one. Four, three, two, one, let's flip it. So exact same batter, same temperature, same time, and you can see the color difference there. And that's just with the addition of some baking soda. So baking soda is going to affect the browning of your pancakes. It will do the same in something like a cookie or a cake. If you want your chocolate chip cookies to come out a little bit darker, um, add a little bit more baking soda in there. It'll give them a little bit more of a caramelized note. It'll help them uh, get more of the sort of toffee-like flavors. That's why oftentimes chocolate chip cookies contain uh, baking soda in them uh, and not baking powder because you, you want them to be kind of dense and chewy, but you also want them to brown really nicely. So baking soda will do that for you. We're down to the last 30 seconds for this one. I'm gonna pop it out. And then what we're going to do is we'll make a third pancake, third back of, batch of pancakes. This time, we're going to add some extra baking powder to it. And we'll see what happens then, all right? Three, two, one. And here we go. All righty. So you can see the difference here. All right, so we're gonna do the third batch of pancakes now. So to the remaining pancake batter, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra baking powder. So now baking powder, is a combination of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, along with uh, starch, just to keep it stabilized, something like cornstarch, and a powdered acid, sometimes multiple powdered acids. But in this case, I'm using Rumsford baking powder, which is a double acting baking powder. It contains a single powdered acid called uh, monocalcium phosphate. Um, and what happens is, as that powder mixes with water uh, and creates an acid, 
The batter's going to undergo an acid-base reaction. In fact, you can probably see a little some of those bubbles popping up in here right now. Um, just because I created some new acid in there. So that acid is going to then interact with the baking powder with the calcium, uh, with the sodium bicarbonate, which is a base. They're going to produce carbon dioxide and water, and that's what's going to leaven your batter. Um, so baking powder, this is a double acting baking powder, which means that first what's going to happen is that the monocalcium phosphate reacts. Um, it'll form some bubbles at the beginning, and then it turns into a secondary form that is stable until it hits around 140 degrees. Once it hits 140 degrees, it's going to react again. So that's where the double acting part comes from. It bubbles once when you first mix it, and then it bubbles again once it cooks. Um, and so you'll often see with your pancakes, I don't know if we'll see it here, but you'll see they'll do an initial rise when we first added uh, the baking powder to the pancake mix, and then they'll do a secondary rise once they're in the pan. Three, two, one, and let's flip it. All right, so in this one, now you can see, look, so the color is not that different. It's slightly darker because baking powder is on its own slightly high in pH. It's slightly more alkaline than it is acidic. Um, but what you really see is the difference in the bubble structure. So this one has many finer bubbles, whereas this one has all kinds of large bubbles. Uh, and that's because we increased the amount of leavening. We increased the amount of carbon dioxide gas that was in there. We increased the amount of water vapor that was in there. Uh, and that's what's going to cause all these bigger bubbles in there. So we should up with a, end up with a pancake that is a little bit sort of spongier and a little bit airier uh, than one that has less baking powder. Three, two, one, and out we come. All righty. So let's take these over to the other room and take a look, shall we? All right. So these are our three pancakes. This is the one that's just a straight up pancake batter. Okay. You can see reasonably good browning, but pretty pale, right? Um, I, I could have cooked it longer, of course, to make it darker, but the whole idea here is that we wanted to compare apples to apples. All right. So pretty pale browning. This is the one with a little bit of baking powder, uh, sorry, baking soda added to it. So a slightly more alkaline dough, higher in pH. Uh, that one browns more, significantly more. These were cooked exact same temperature, exact same amount of time. And you can see how much more it browned in that amount of time. Uh, and that's going to lead, of course, to uh, sort of a darker flavor, more complex caramel notes, um, a little bit too much baking soda, and it can start having some sort of more harsh metallic notes. Um, but if you want your pancakes a little bit darker and a little bit more caramelized, um, add a little bit of baking soda to them. Now, finally, this one has extra baking powder added to it. You can see somewhere in between on as far as the browning goes not quite as pale as the plain pancake not quite as dark as the pancake with baking soda added to it um, but somewhere in between because baking powder is a little bit alkaline on its own on balance um, but the big difference you see is in the whole structure so this one lots of big bubbles over here in the original one lots of fine bubbles very small bubbles and over here you see lots of very big bubbles um, because you're adding more baking powder you're going to get more leavening which means more bubbles inside uh, and then when we cut them open, let's see if we can see a difference in that texture. I'm kind of squishing it with my fork, so I don't know how much of a difference we're gonna see. Actually, here's a better way to show you. Instead of trying to cut it with my fork, I think tearing it will really show you the difference in texture. So this is going to be the regular pancake, okay? I'm gonna tear it open, I'll show you the interior texture. Pretty fluffy, okay? Reasonably fluffy, this is gonna be a good pancake. I made sure the recipe was that way. Now let's tear open the uh, the one that uh, has some extra baking powder added to it. Okay, so you can see how much sort of lighter that is, how much bigger those bubbles are in there. Um, so that's going to be a much lighter pancake, uh, a sort of airier pancake, as opposed to one that's kind of more, I don't know, a little bit more chewy. I don't know, I guess no pancakes are really chewy, but anyhow, uh, that's the difference in texture. Let me show you, um, let me see if we can put them side by side here. So this is the original. This is the one with added baking powder. All right. And of course, there are limits to the amount of baking powder you can add. You know, if eventually once you start adding too much baking powder, uh, the batter is not able to hold all that air inside it. So instead of adding some extra leavening, what happens is it almost deflates, it overinflates, and then it kind of deflates like pfft. You know, like it deflates like an overinflated balloon or like a, like a waterbed with a leak in it. Um, so there's a limit to the amount of extra baking powder, powder you can add in a batter, a limit to the amount of sort of fluffiness you can get in a pancake. Um, and of course, all of it is sort of a matter of balance. It really depends on what you want. Some people like their pancakes really tall and fluffy. Some people like them uh, sort of a little bit squatter and a little bit more evenly browned. Um, so it really is a matter of personal choice what you want to do. Um, but now that you know... Uh, when you add baking soda, your pancakes come out darker. When you add extra baking powder, uh, 
your pancakes come out lighter, um, lighter in texture that is. So now that you know all this, you can go forth and alter your pancake recipes uh, to your heart's content uh, to get sort of the exact results that you want. And really, I'm, I'm hoping all this will help you become sort of better, uh, more empowered cooks in the kitchen, you know, people who can uh, who can decide for themselves how they want their pancakes or if they want pancakes at all. <laughs> all right. Um, you can find this information uh, in my book, The Food Lab. You can also hear a lot about it uh, uh, on the newest episode of The Recipe with Kenji and Deb, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and I will leave links to both those things below. Um, and I will also leave a link to my pancake recipe and to Deb Perlman's pancake recipe. Uh, and in the meantime, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I hope you have a nice day and a good morning and, uh, you know, happy pancaking <laughs> oh come on come here pancake there you go good boy all right see you later <laughs> <laughs>